Last week, we didn't really look at the lectionary because we were looking at our reflections and goals. We didn't look at many of the lectionary scriptures, but one of them in Matthew, I'm going to very quickly summarize, was the Beatitudes. And Jesus said, blessed, favored are the people poor in spirit, the people who mourn, the people who are meek, who are hungry and thirsty for righteousness, they're merciful, the pure in heart, the peacemakers, and listen to this, blessed, favored, are the persecuted. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you, even falsely. Rejoice and be glad. Now that sounds like a lot of things that are not that great. It reminds me of being in Ireland. And when I was in Ireland, I think it was Kristen who stepped in the poop. And people said, oh, you are so lucky. And as we walk on, a bird poops on my head, my coat, and my coffee. Oh, you are so lucky. And I was like, these Irish people know nothing about luck because that is not lucky. Well, when Jesus says all these blessed things, he's picking some things that don't sound that grand to me. You know, when you're persecuted, even when you're innocent, when you're mourning, when you're poor in spirit, when you're hungry and thirsty for righteousness. Those are hard moments. Well, today's scripture, Jesus goes on to say, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost its taste, how can the saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. He goes on and says, you are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts a basket on top of it. But they put it on a lampstand and it gives light to the whole house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Jesus says that we are the salt and light. It is our God-given nature. Salt really cannot lose its saltiness. If salt is not salty anymore, it's because it's been diluted with other things. Other things have been added. But the salt itself is going to remain salty. If you dissolve it in water and you evaporate the water, the same salt is going to be in crystals in the bottom of the pan. When you eat the salt, it's going to sweat out of you. It's going to remain salt. God has made you and graciously blessed each of us for a particularly redemptive role in creation. This is our God-given nature. A small amount of light and a small amount of salt has a huge effect in life. Just a pinch of salt in a dish will make or break a dish. If you miss it, you forget to salt it, the whole dish will taste off. God made us to enliven life, to spice things up, to bring out other flavors. God has created us to shine and to give life to each other. Jesus did not say on the Sermon on the Mount, ugh, you sinful people, 
leave your transgressions and become salt and light. No, Jesus was speaking to imperfect people and he said, you are the light, you are the salt. We do not have to work to become this. God has made us to be able to be redemptive in our world. God has blessed us with gifts, and those blessings and gifts are meant to bless our communities. But we do need to get to know ourselves, embrace our gifts, and allow them to flow through us. May we always go and fully be who God has made us to be. And like he said, let the world see you and glorify, not us, but glorify God who made us and who has given us gifts. Jesus continues on, do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. To fulfill them is to embody the law, to incarnate it, to give it flesh and bones. And Jesus came and in his life, he enlivened the law he fulfilled it and set us free from it. He goes on to say, For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until it is all accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them to be, teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. You know, when it ends, it sounds almost like, well, we do need to get it together perfect. But Jesus said that all the law could be summarized in glorifying God, knowing who God is, and loving our neighbor. So we are called, we are called to be so much more than self-righteous. The Pharisees and the Sadducees walked around saying, put the spotlight on me. Look how good we are. We fast and we give. Look at us, we pray on the street corners, but we want to be different from self-righteous. We are called to be humbly grateful that Jesus fully embodied the law and called us to be sons and daughters of the one most high. May we all give glory to our creator through the parts that we do in our corner. May we remove yokes, put away pointing fingers, evil speech, and share our bread, homes, and love. May we enliven God's grace right where we are every day. Let us have a prayer. God, help us to be so inspired by your goodness that we can quote P Peter's words, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have words of eternal life, and we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One. Help our lives to simply reflect your goodness. In Jesus' name, amen.